let's have a look at these answers. 4 minus i times 2 plus 3i. So you had a look at multiplying complex numbers in very basic forms before. So this is pretty stock standard. We've got an answer here. Do we have agreement? We had to get it checked, right? Are you happy with 11 plus 10i? Yep. Um, just before we, we leave off it, let's just do one line of working together, make sure we know what we're doing, right? This is just like normal, like if everything was all real numbers, we could handle the arithmetic very similarly, right? So I'm going to distribute this 4 across to these two, and then I'm going to distribute this minus i across to these two. So you're going to get, first line, help me out, 8 plus what? 12i, fantastic. Minus 2i, minus 3i squared. Are you you're happy with that? Okay. So you can see, hopefully, even this line itself is enough of a check. You're like, okay, you'll very quickly start to realize if you lay these out in the way we normally would expand things, you'll get your two imaginary terms there in the middle. Looks good. And then this guy here, you're watching for your double negatives all the time because that's kind of what we get out of imaginary numbers when you raise them to powers. That's going to be our 8 plus 3. Happy with that as well? Now, um, I'm not even going to do the, you know, the line immediately previous to this, but what's our mechanism for dealing with division? You can't just divide through the way we do with real numbers. What's the first thing that you do? Yeah, I have to realize this denominator, right? So we multiply by, what do we call that thing again? Conjugate. The conjugate. I'm going to um, push on us a little bit. If you've got your notes there from last lesson, we've been saying the conjugate. We really should be calling it the complex conjugate, okay? Because it's not 3 plus i, it's 3 minus i that we're multiplying by. And so it's the imaginary part that's sort of changing. So it's the complex conjugate. So we should uh, be particular with that language. Um, do we end up there? 9 over 5 minus 3 over 5i? Happy with that? Thumbs up? Okay. By the way, whoever wrote this um, solution, uh, great job. One of the things that you might have been wanting to do at the beginning is just leave it as 9 minus 3i divided by 5. And that's the correct answer, by the way, I should point out. However, we tend to want to write these as the real part completely separate to the imaginary part, okay? Uh, so this is, even though you've got the same denominator there, the customary way we would write this. So, thumbs up. All right, uh, let's have a quick check through here. I'm just gonna do the working for this first one, right? When we multiply through by i, just the first time, right? We're starting with this number, so we multiply the first thing by i, and then we multiply the second thing by i, and I think you're happy to see that that's going to end up as negative two. So we're happy to confirm that. You then get these successive answers. What do you get when you simplify this guy? Because you don't even need to write down like five or two. This looks familiar, doesn't it? What answer did you get? Did you get two i plus five? You got z one, in other words. So I'm just going to leave that there as our um, as our answer. We will return to these four numbers a bit later on in the lesson. For now. You've made the heading starter questions. Can you make a new heading, which is refining language and notation? And it's the answer 16, isn't it? Okay, so. Let's review. We introduced this idea of complex numbers as kind of our version of those little water molecules that were bouncing around those um, bigger molecules. We could see vibrating, jiggling about. You're like, why is it doing that? There's something invisible acting on those. And that was my comparison for, you don't have to write this down, for when you have a quadratic like this, and we did the sum and product of roots, right? And you're like, oh, I'm going to get a sum of negative 2. And I'm going to get a product of 4, despite the fact that I can't see where those roots are. We would have normally said, oh, they don't exist. Then we said, well, if we, if we expand our number system to include these otherwise invisible numbers, then we can see why. When you add those two complex roots together, you'll get this. When you multiply those two complex roots together, you get this. When we went ahead and proved that, right? Now, why is it? This is not a rhetorical question. Why is it that those water molecules were invisible for so long? Like, why did no one think there might be smaller things than what we can see under the microscope? Any suggestions? Like, this is actually a practical question. Why was it invisible? Any takers? Who, who, who does a science here in stage six? Just a quick show of hands first. Okay, most of you. Fantastic. Thank you, hands down. What do you reckon? What was the reason why they're invisible? Yeah, you had your hand up before, right? Yeah, uh, oh, because at first, in, back in like ancient years, the 
scale of measure, measurement is very high. You can't get um, very accurate results. Therefore, we're only concerned about macroscopic things. Mm, yeah, and for sure. So I think yeah. about the uh, microscopic world or how it might affect the macroscopic world. Yeah, that, I think that's, that's perfect, right? It's a question of scale, isn't it? These things are just too small. They're just too small. In fact, even now, we're just barely pushing the boundaries of our microscopy that we can see water molecules, right? And they're like super blurry because these things are just so small. They're like, so think about the wavelength of light and how small that is and then the things we're trying to look at, right? So these things were invisible for a different reason though. It's not to do with scale, and by the end of this lesson, we're gonna understand why they were invisible. But to get to there, we need to be able to talk about and use notation that will describe all of these things. We've introduced some of it, but we need more, okay? So, underneath this, uh, let's go back to something. You can write this a little larger because we're gonna attach some things to it. Let's go back to the way that we described every complex number. As you can see on the board, right? It has these two separate components, right? So we would write it our customary way is to write it like so. Um, I got a go question um, last lesson about like, do we put the I first or the I second? The short answer is you'll see it in both of those positions, so don't worry about it too much. Um, it depends kind of on the purpose of what we're gonna do with this, and we'll, um, we'll highlight that as we go along. We wanna add some more language and notation here, right? So firstly, let's talk about this guy over here, that number that we see out the front. This is what we call the real component, right? And sometimes we want to just talk about the real component without writing the words real component. So our shorthand for that is, if you have some complex numbers in, and you just want the real part, we use this notation, right? What is the real component of Z? It's going to be that number, A, okay? Now when we talk about the other part, there's a slight difference here. This, including the I, this is our imaginary component. But when we think about the sort of converse of this guy, right? Um, what, by the way, what notation do you think we would use if this is how we refer to the real component? How do you think we refer to the imaginary component? Just take a stab in the dark. I am, right? Um, sometimes, sometimes we use completely random things like, what's our, our pronumeral for gradient? I know. M, right? Sometimes it's like, oof, why is that? This time, at least, it's reasonably sensible. When we're looking for the imaginary component of Z, this is slightly weird. We actually just mean the coefficient in front of that. Hmm. So these two things, these two things are, are slightly different, okay? So we mean the imaginary component is the whole thing. So these here are connected, clearly, right? The imaginary component is bi, but when I write this, I just mean b. What's that coefficient there? Okay. So that follows that if I say the real component here, if that's zero, what that means is you've just got this part here. Do you agree with that? Right, if that's zero. So we would call this a purely imaginary number. A purely imaginary number because there's no real component. Uh, and in just the same way, if this guy, if B is zero, then what do you think we call that? Not purely imaginary, it's purely real, real right. Now it's also customary to point out that both A and B, our coefficients in this case, they're both real numbers themselves. A is a real number, B, how many lots of this imaginary unit is also a real number. So in this case, you know, our B would be 10, our B would be negative 3 fifths, right? So the way we would write that, our notation to refer to the fact that A and B are both real numbers, is we would say, uh, note, A and B are, do you recognize this from earlier in the year? This is our, the formal way to say this is, is an element of the real number set. But the way I would read this is A and B, they're real numbers. That's essentially the way that I would interpret that, okay? So this, if we define Z to be any complex number like that, if I had some other complex number, and you saw before, <laughs> this is the reason, like, why, why did we choose this letter? But anyway, if we had some other number uh, that was complex, that was called W, okay? If the real component of this other complex number was the same as the real component of this complex number, and if the imaginary part of this new complex number is the same as their imaginary part of our original complex number, these are the two defining characteristics of your number. So if they're both the same, what you can conclude is therefore 
this first complex number is the same as the other one, right? If the real components match, the imaginary components match, then they're the same complex number, okay? 